technical details there. We're still setting up the, the computers and for the Beamer. But, uh, well, I'd like to welcome you. This is the 12th edition of the ALGA meeting, which stands for Commutative Algebra and Algebraic Geometry. Uh, this year, I mean, it's a special meeting. Uh, we're celebrating the 70th birthdays of Aaron Simis and Stephen Kleiman. And also the 60th birthday of IMPA. IMPA is doing 60 years. It's not here, but it's outside. So IMPA is a bit younger. And, uh, well, I'm not going to say much about Steve and Aaron now, as, I mean, uh, I will call here the organizing committee and uh, the director of IMPA to, to talk about that and uh, to say some words of welcome to you. So let me be sh short here. And I'll pass the word first to Cesar Camacho, uh, professor here at IMPA, director of the institute, uh, renowned for his work on dynamical systems and uh, for his good handling of the institute as well. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, it is a really a pleasure to, to welcome you on behalf of IMPA uh, to this meeting, the 12th uh, ALGA meeting. And especially uh, on this occasion in which uh, we celebrate the 70th anniversary of Stephen Kleiman and Aaron Simis. Stephen Kleiman uh, is one of the few mathematicians working abroad with a strong influence Our recognition and also the greeting the greetings on the celebration of your 70th verses this meeting also celebrates the 70th anniversary of the uh, birthday of one of the more relevant Brazilian mathematicians our dear friend Aaron Simis an outstanding and influential member of our mathematical community I am particularly happy to see that this meeting will do the due honors to him. Aaron, happy birthday to you also. I wish uh, to all of you an interesting and productive uh, meeting and a nice stay at IMPA. Thank you. Okay, Cesar, thank you very much. Uh, so we go on, and I think I will let the word first to Ragni Pina, and she's going to say a few words about Steve. And she's a member of the organizing committee. I will present the other members as, uh, after Ragni. <laughs> okay, so Ragni, do you want to? Thank you. Uh, to have it, uh, yeah. well, I need the. Um, I need to use one hand for the, what I think. So does it work or not? It works? OK, good. Dear Steve, dear Aaron, 
Uh, I'm happy to be here in the celebration of your both, both your birthdays and uh, also IMPA's birthday. And it's very fitting that this celebration takes place here at IMPA, I think. Uh, I would like to say a few words about Steve. And it will not cover his mathematics, but it will just be some uh, little glimpses of uh, what uh, has... <laughs> Does it not work? <laughs> ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's on. I can recommend this book. It's a book about the math department at MIT. And uh, as you can see, some of you will know many of these people. And the book consists of basically of interviews with people at, associated with the math department at MIT, and in particular, there's a person here. It's not, he's not an Italian mafioso, but <laughs> you will recognize that he's sitting in this audience. In the book, you can read about Steve, that he came to MIT 16-year-old, wanting to study electrical engineering, like his dad and I think. And he started out in electrical engineering. He got uh, somehow converted to mathematics, to make a long story short. Actually, it was a short story because he was only an undergraduate at MIT for three years. Um, so he switched from electrical engineering, went into mathematics, completed his degree in three years. And after that, he went to that place up the river, as Bott would have said if he had been at MIT and not at Harvard. He always called MIT the, that place down the river. But Steve went to that place up the river, also called Harvard. And there he studied with this person. A towering figure at his time. And Sariski had other students. Notably, you can see some of them here. This is a photo which I think still is in your office at MIT. He used to be on the wall in your office. In any case, this picture is taken in 81. And the people you see here, Hironaka, Manfred, Steve, Mike Artin, Zariski, and his wife. Um, the occasion was what, Steve? Was it? Uh, Oscar got an honorary degree from Harvard. I see. OK. So that's a celebration. But let's go back in time. So uh, to say something about Zariski's students that you see here. Uh, in 1970, at the International Congress of Mathematicians in Nice, in the algebra, I mean, first of all, at that congress, Hironaka got the Fields Medal. The three people here, Manfred, Klein, and Artin, were all among the invited speakers in the algebraic geometry section, together with people like Rosendick and Dulin. So it was a good, uh, <coughs> good crop of students that Sariski had, I would say. Uh, when Steve completed his thesis toward a numerical uh, theory of ampleness with Zariski in 1965, uh, he was offered a position at Columbia. And he went there. Uh, at the time, Hironaka was at Columbia. And they had a very uh, vibrant, I think, and active algebraic geometry group. Hironaka had lots of student, students. Steve soon got lots of students. Uh, he, what he did was he spent some time at Columbia, but he also spent a year in Paris. And unfortunately, this picture is slightly earlier than the year you were there. I think you were there in 66, 67. And I'm sure Lick can tell us precisely when this picture was taken. Which year was it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. So in any case, the, it's, uh, I'm sorry for the poor quality, but it's so Grosendick is here. There's Theodonaire. Uh, this looks like Schwartz, but it's probably not. Uh, I think Renault is maybe there. I mean, Lick can probably tell you more about who's, who we can see. From behind, it's a little hard to identify them. But Steve participated in Grosendick's SGA Seminar 6 and wrote two uh, of the papers for that uh, book, as you can see here. Here is uh, another person present. Uh, sorry, this 
is of course dirigée by Berthelot, Grotendieck, and Elusi. And la collaboration de, I think Ferrand, this is where Ferrand did not refuse to write the thing. One of the times he refused to write what Grotendieck told him to write, but he was giving an expose, whereas Steve did what he was told and wrote two papers, <laughs> one based on the Renault's lecture and the other one uh, was your own uh, thing. So, uh, so I think this was a very fruitful year for in your uh, career. And actually, both Elise and Kleinman, as you can see, went back to Rottenbeck together with somebody who's also here. Angelo should have been here, but he couldn't come. Um, but this was late. The book was published in 2005, but I think the conference took place uh, earlier than that. 2003, something like that. Okay, so this has been a long uh, story. Now, um, maybe <coughs> what happened after Colombia? So Steve left Colombia, and I'm not sure precisely which year. Uh, which year was it? When did you go to MIT? Fall of 69. Fall of 69. Okay. So in fall of 69, Steve goes back to MIT, and he has been there ever since. <laughs> it's a long, long uh, uh, story. And in the 70s, uh, he brought with him students from uh, Columbia when he went to MIT. Uh, so he was already <laughs> fully equipped with students, and there were lots of other students in algebraic geometry. So MIT became sort of a real interesting place for algebraic geometry. Steve ran the algebraic uh, geometry seminar, uh, which started out at MIT for uh, 25 years, something like that. Eventually, this seminar merged with the Harvard algebraic geometry seminar, so it became just one seminar instead of two. And it probably, I mean, in the old days, we had many seminars. In the, now, there are fewer seminars in algebraic geometry in the, in the Boston area. They used to be really alone. So in the 70s, some of us ended up as graduate students at MIT. And uh, at that time, MIT owned a house in Vermont called Talbot House. And uh, we had uh, at least, I think there were two meetings at Talbot House that I was present at. Here is one from 1976, in the fall of 1976. And you will recognize some people here. Uh, Sander, this is Ron, <laughs> Ron Irving. Uh, <laughs> this one, this is Ron Irving. And there is Dan, there is Nils, this is Matek, Artin, Barbara, who's now back at MIT <laughs> in an administrative position. And, sorry. Are you in that picture? Am I in that picture? I'm with, uh, sorry. I'm with, oh. I'm going to. There I'm, I'm there with Sandy, as he was called at the time, and here's the Happy Kleinman family. Steve and Beverly and Debbie. And is that Niels? Niels is there, Mark is there, Lustig and his wife, Dave uh, Harbinger, Marge, Bachelor, uh, Jerry and his wife, I guess, uh, Gain Winters and his wife. Uh, yeah, and this one you know. <laughs> what? Jerry Newman. Yeah, yeah. And Israel. Yeah. Yeah, he's there. And then we had we had very nice. Uh, we had a, a woman cooking at Talbot House, and she made wonderful food. And here we were enjoying dinner. And again, uh, this person you know, Nils, Mike, Steve, me, Sandy, Beverly. Who's that? That's magic. I'm not sure. I can't see the Okay, so this, these were sort of organized events during our time, sort of extracurricular seminars <laughs> at the time. Now, I said that Steve was at MIT all the time since he, I mean, this was his job, but of course he had sabbaticals and he had long stays other places. One of his, <clears throat> in the beginning, California was a favorite place to go uh, for part of the year, at least the summer. Uh, he would leave as soon as teaching was over and go to California. Uh, this had to do with Beverly. Uh, and then, after a while, he started to go to Italy a lot. So Italy was a big 
country for, for ski, and I guess it still is. And just to give you a sample of uh, a conference in 1981 in Villa Monastero. This was, <coughs> here is somebody making a uh, <laughs> and this is, uh, this is Gianni Sacchiero and his family. And this was on like, uh, Lake Como. It was a beautiful place. This monastery apparently is now a favorite place to go for weddings and things like that. It's, it's just a fantastic villa on the Como Lake. So in the old days, mathematicians were really able to organize fantastic conferences, at least the places where we went. This is also a fantastic place, by the way. <laughs> you all know I love it. <laughs> and there was an excursion to uh, the pass, Paso del Bernina. So here is me on the top of the world. Now, Spain was another important, is and has been uh, another important country for Steve. Uh, here's from a conference in Sitges, south of Barcelona. And you see we're all here, except Dan Laxo, who unfortunately could not attend this conference. But the rest of us, the rest of us, as you can see, are still here. <laughs> and now, uh, to say a little bit about, uh, I said Zariski, I said Grosendick, I should say Ser. Uh, and then Steve sort of stumbled upon Schubert, it's not, maybe not the right word <laughs> to say that you stumbled upon it, but you got involved with Schubert and Schubert Calculus, and together with Dan Laxo, and uh, one thing led to another, numerative geometry, and Zeuthen, Danish mathematician, uh, two centuries ago, <laughs> um, was a very important person in enumerative geometry. And uh, in 1989, there was a 100th birthday party for Zeuthen in Copenhagen. And again, you will see many of the people in this picture are also in this audience. I'll not point out to everybody here. There are also people who are not here, but uh, some of us are still here. Um, did I want to say anything more? Yes. So, um, Scandinavian, as I said, uh, uh, I didn't say. One of the other countries that Stephen, Steve spent a lot of time in and, and still does, and now for family reasons. You know that both his children live in Copenhagen. His three grandchildren live in Copenhagen, so he has to go to Copenhagen a lot. And he already went to Copenhagen a lot, which is one of the reasons that his children actually ended up in Copenhagen. I mean, you get what you, you know. <laughs> with all the sabbaticals in Copenhagen, you know, how could they not end up with Danish spouses? <laughs> Which is what they did. So, uh, Copenhagen and Denmark is uh, one of his main countries. And it also, of course, has to do with Beverly, his wife being Danish. And I would like to say I wish Beverly could have been here. And please give her all our best regard. Um, we were also lucky, I mean, Stephen coming to Copenhagen, so he would also visit Sweden, especially the Mitta Glesler Institute, and Oslo from time to time. And we thought then that it would be fitting to celebrate his 60th birthday in Oslo. So here is from the Academy of Science in Oslo, and Steve giving a speech at the celebration dinner. And again, you will recognize people who are here and people who are not here. And at this conference, there were many of his students. Some of them are also here. And I would like to close with this picture and a greeting to Steve from all his students. I think I can speak on behalf of all his students and say thank you, Steve, and happy birthday. Okay, thank you, Ragni. It was wonderful to see the pictures. 
and uh, to see Steve in, uh, uh, in various parts of his, uh, of his life as a mathematician. Uh, I'd like to, to mention that uh, I didn't say that. Ragni Pina is a professor at the University of Oslo. She is a member of the organizing committee. The other members are Abramo Hefes from the University of uh, Federal Fluminense here in Brazil. Uh, Bern Ulrich from Purdue University. And uh, there is another member of the organizing committee. Uh, can you put this? What about this? Who could not come here is Dan Edidin, an ex-student of Steve from the University of Missouri. He could not come due to administrative duties. It's the beginning of the year in the U.S. So. Okay, so uh, I will pass on the microphone to Abramo to say a few words also. I'm a member of the organizing committee and an ex-student of Steve's. I will be very brief. Well, I'm happy to have the opportunity to say some words in this opening ceremony. First of all, I would like to welcome the participants of this meeting and thank you all for coming. This meeting is dedicated to the celebration of the 17th anniversary of Steve Kleiman and Aaron Simis, who had a great influence on the formation of the algebraic geometry group and commutative algebra in Brazil, contributing to the flourishment of mathematics in this country. Aaron occupies a central position in Brazilian mathematics. He is a reference in commutative algebra, not only in the country, but also worldwide. His mathematical legacy, besides the substantial work he produced, includes many mathematical descendants. From his part, Steve planted in this land seeds that blossomed and fructified, originating an active community of, of algebraic geometers. Hence, nothing more natural than celebrating both birthdays with a meeting in this part of the world in recognition of their sound contributions for the development of mathematics in this country. Ten years ago, in this same place, many of us were here to celebrate the 60th birthday of Aaron and Steve. Time seems to have flied, but meanwhile, our collaboration and friendship has solidified. I hope that in the next decade, time will flow logarithmically, while our friendship and collaboration will grow exponentially. Happy birthday, Steve, and happy birthday, Aaron. Let us celebrate with your 70th anniversary our long-standing friendship and wish you a long and happy life. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Abramo. And uh, now I'll pass on the word to Bern Ulrich, who's gonna... Uh, Okay. <laughs> Can I move this here to the table? Oh, you would prefer? Okay, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Agora vai passar para aqui. Okay. Well, first of all, I want to apologize for the mix-up, the technical mix-up. It was due to my slideshow uh, that caused some problems. Uh, I would like to begin by reading a letter from Volmer Vasconcelos, who could not attend this meeting in person, unfortunately, because of his health condition. 
and I apologize for my poor Portuguese. Uh, from Volmer. On the happy occasion of the fest for Aron and Steve, I would like to add my voice to say a few words about Aron. Agradecido por usar uma voz emprestada. Aron Simis, un testimonio. The arc of our friendship extends over half a century. In a small place, Recife at the time, two people with similar interests in rings and things were bound to meet and interact. Added to that, cultural facts such as we were both into movies and were sofradores to Santa Cruz. There were also the fact that we both liked the beaches around Recife. Gaibu, Porto de Galinha, even Bon Viage, where we both meet often rather than in the dark waters of math departments. We also shared many friends, Jürgen, Bernd, Craig, that fell in love with those places. Aside, the long beaches were often used as sandboards. It is not clear to me how mathematical research in Brazil can take place outside their influence. I can't figure how colleagues that work west of the coast manage. Maybe they have powerful imagination or are delusional. We were never work colleagues, but always managed to meet very often, personally or a bite at a time. Aside, if only Skype had existed much earlier. We discussed approximation complexes on the New Jersey Turnpike and Ries algebras on a Zariski almost dense set of the planet. Great memories left. Aron is a dynamo of activity, or more politically correctly speaking, a wind turbine of energy. His enthusiasm and imagination infect those he meets. He is driven by a great passion, as such individuals are bound to. He is also a man of solidarity, with a great concern to promote the development of, mathem of mathematics in Brazil, and especially to protect the interests of young mathematicians, this most precious commodity. Few countries do this so persistently as Brazil. You should be proud of it. It is a pity this country did not let him stay at a place where he could do so much of that. With best wishes and thanks for everything, pedido especial que no enganchas a chuteras tau sedo, precisamos de você. So this was Volmer, uh, and I would like to add my own words to that. Aron, as we heard, was born and grew up in Recife in the northeast of Brazil. He went to high school there and studied mathematics at the university. And this is also where he, met, where he met Volmer, an association that would turn into a lifelong friendship and mathematical collaboration. For his doctoral studies, Aron went to Queen's University in Canada, where he studied under Paulo Ribbenboim, another well-known Brazilian algebraist. Besides suffering from the cold, Aron studied projective modules and cancellation theorems. This was the emphasis of his work until the late 70s, when Serre's conjecture on projective models was proved by Quillen and Susling. I got to know about Aron when I was an undergraduate through his first publication, a Queen's University monograph entitled When Are Projective Models Free? It was on the list of references of an, induct of an introductory course in homological algebra that I took at the time. In 1977 and 78, Aron published his first papers on causal homology. They were the nucleus for a large body of joint work with Jürgen Herzog and Volmer Vasconcelos on Ries rings and associated graded rings of ideals, which are the algebraic representations of the blow up of a variety along a sub variety. Much of this work was done during Herzog's frequent visits to Brazil, first to Impa, where Aron worked at the time, and later to Recife. 
In their work, Aron, Jürgen, and Vollmer introduced what they called approximation complexes, which are substitutes for free resolutions of blow-up algebras. Thus, they placed the study of blow-up algebras in the context of homological algebra, which allows for a more systematic and conceptual treatment. Their work changed the subject forever. I cannot resist to write down one of their theorems because it's so fundamental. So this is Herzog, Siemens, and Vasconcelos. So assume R is a local core Macaulay ring. And I is an idea of positive co-dimension. And they assume two things. The first, I mentioned Kozul homology, is that the homology of the Kozul complex of the idea is called Macaulay, is a core Macaulay model. And there are many classes of ideals known where this takes place. Second, this is a condition on the local numbers of generators of the ideal. The number of generators of the ideal locally at P is bounded by the co-dimension of P for every P. And the conclusion is, there are two conclusions. First, the Ries ring is core Macaulay. So the Ries ring of I, which is simply the ring R adjoined IT, where T is a variable, as well as the associate graded ring, are both core Macaulay. That's the first condition. That's two. The second, the natural map from the symmetric algebra of the idea onto the Ries ring is an isomorphism, which then allows one to describe the Ries ring explicitly in terms of generators and relations because those are known for the symmetric algebra. So this is a very fundamental theorem. And after their result, a goal in the subject became to remove assumption two, the assumption on the local numbers of generators. From the late 80s to the mid 90s, the focus was on proving co-Macauliness. So that's assertion A of the blow up algebras. And there's a large body of work devoted to this subject by many authors, including Craig Unicki, Shiro Goto, who is here, Aron Simis, Volmer Vasconcelos, myself, and others. If, on the other hand, one removes the same assumption and tries to prove assertion B, then one is in trouble because assertion B does not hold anymore. Instead, in this case, if one removes assumption 2, there is a kernel of the map from the symmetric algebra onto the Ries algebra. And determining this kernel amounts to finding the implicit defining equations of the Ries ring. A special case of this is a problem of finding the implicit equations of projective varieties that are given parametrically, sometimes called the implicitization problem. There has been a great deal of work on this subject over the, the past decade by commutative algebraists, elimination theorists, and applied math mathematicians in geometric modeling. And the approximation complexes by Herzog, Siemens, and Vasconcelos have re-emerged as a standard tool in this area. Aron has been involved in this recent work as well through his collaboration with Hong and Vasconcelos and with Buzet and Chardin. And you can learn about other developments from Claudia Polini's talk tomorrow. I finally met Aron in person at the Oberwolfach meeting in 1981. And this photo was taken at that same meeting 
and I don't think Aron has changed that much. <laughs> we, been, we, be, we began collaborating in 1988 when I started visiting Brazil on a regular basis. The occasion was a workshop at UFBA in Salvador, where Aron worked at the time. And here are some other participants of that meeting, and I expect you will run into some of them during this week, uh, at yeah, least no, three of them. Not my wife. No, oh, you didn't bring your wife, that's too bad. I thought there would be four <laughs> people we could run into, but it's only three, okay. Um, I have always had great fun working with Aron, and I value our friendship tremendously. I've also become deeply attached to the Northeast and to Brazil in general. Our work that was often joined with Boima Vasconcelos, the other three of us, has initially focused on blow-up algebras, but later branched out to other topics like multiplicity theory and integral closures. These were also the subject of discussions during the last few days here in Rio that I had with Steve Kleiman another good friend and collaborator. And so everything comes together nicely. Aron's mathematical interests are very broad. He always had a keen interest in problems coming from geometry, and he has also worked on computational and combinatorial aspects of commutative algebra. I only mention a series of beautiful papers with Volmer Vasconcelos and Rafael Villarreal on monomial ideals most notably edge ideals of graphs. Some of this work was done at conferences in Mexico, co-organized by Villarreal in the 90s. And this photo shows the three of them in Guanajuato in 92. And this is Aron charming a lady, <laughs> again in Guanajuato in a later year. Aron has tremendous merits in fostering mathematics in Brazil and in the developing world. He is a past president of the Brazilian Mathematical Society and, of the, and a member of the Academy of Sciences of Brazil and of, the, of, and of the Academy of Sciences for the Developing World, formerly known as Third World Academy of Sciences. He has organized a vast number of national and international meetings. I only mentioned three conferences and workshops at ITCP in Trieste, the Pan American Advanced Studies Institute in Olinda three years ago, and his role in initiating and maintaining this ALGA network. Aron has mentored a great number of doctoral and postdoctoral students. This is Aron with young people at the uh, uh, party we had three years ago in Olinda. And it is amazing to me how many mathematicians he has brought to Brazil, be it as collaborators and regular visitors, or be it as faculty members at UFPE. Yeah. <laughs> it is obvious that Aron is in the midst of an active program of research in mathematics and of mentoring young mathematicians. He seems to be busier to me than ever. So I join in with Volmer's request, do not put away the shoes too soon, we still need you. But I also want to reveal something not everybody knows about him, namely, he is a talented artist as well. And so I add my own special request, perhaps you can carve out some time now to go back to your painting. And thank you and happy birthday all. Thank you, Bernd. Uh, so uh, almost over the opening ceremony. 
I would just like to say that uh, I will make uh, some announcements uh, during the conference, uh, things that are necessary for you to know. Uh, we're going to do a five-minute break before starting with uh, the first speaker, which is Luke Luzi. I would just like to mention that, uh, and I must say this here, that uh, uh, not only are Steve and Ron 70 this year, also a very important uh, mathematician here in Brazil, Carl Otto Stur, is also 70. And I'd like to say that uh, I cannot imagine, I mean, algebraic geometry and commutative algebra in Brazil without these three. So, and the 12th AUGA meeting without these three. So, thank you for, I mean, uh, and happy birthday to you all. <laughs> okay.